What can I tell you? <laughs> it's five seconds before five minutes before the hour. We'll have a quick look at the news and be right back with the Grateful Dead. Houston Radio presents news live at 55 now. State Department news officer is in the news, the top of the news. This hour I'll have details of this and other news stories for you after this word from the Bay Surf Shop. Announcing Bay Surf Shop, second annual sale of custom surfboards. Many great names to choose from. Cod, B, Rick, Hanson, Gordon Smith, and Jacobs. Up to 25% off on selected models. Receive a free can of slip check, given with other boards purchased at regular price. This Christmas surprise that special someone with his or her own custom surfboard from Bay's Surf Shop, the largest shop of its type in the South. Take advantage of our free layaway or easy financing plans. Three locations to serve you. 2445 Times Boulevard in the Village, 9105 Long Point at Campbell Road in Spray Branch, and 2410 Calder in Beaumont. Each location open until 9 every night through Christmas. That's Bay Surf Shop, second annual sale of custom surfboards. A State Department news officer says all 71 refugees who were flown to Cuba, or from Cuba, to the Mexican border town of Matamoros tonight, are in good condition. Most of the refugees were elderly. They were taken in two buses to Brownsville, Texas, just across the Rio Grande. After initial processing, they were scheduled to be taken to a Brownsville hotel for a roast beef dinner. The news officer said many of the refugees will be going to New York and to Florida. Theirs was the first such flight from Cuba in a year. About 3,000 Americans and their Cuban relatives are reported waiting for permission and an op opportunity to leave Cuba for the U.S. Cuba and Mexico last year worked out a new repatriation agreement, and some Mexican sources have said prospects of all Americans leaving Cuba appear good. Without comment, the Army today released Private First Class Joe Smith of Brownsville, California. In case you forgot, he's the young man who was given a 30-day leave after basic training in 1965 and went home to await orders, where he stayed for a year and a half. And finally, as for a discharge, he said the Army first talked of charging him with desertion and then with being absent without leave, but no such action was taken. And today at California's Oakland Army Base, he went through a separation process that took a little over an hour and emerged a civilian. He said it's all over and everything's all right. Army Staff Sergeant Leonard Safford of Chilliam, Maryland, has been sentenced to 25 years hard labor for passing secrets to the Soviet Union. Safford pleaded guilty at a court-martial and was sentenced immediately. Another man, Sergeant First Class Ulysses Harris of Neptune, New Jersey, also is charged with working with Soviet aides. He faces a court-martial later this month. U.S. Army Major Richard Pierce, a decorated veteran of the Vietnam War, says he flew to Cuba last May with his four-year-old son for strictly personal reasons. Pierce, formerly of Houston, met with Western newsmen in Havana today. At the time of his disappearance, he had access to top-secret military information. President Johnson has issued a statement praising the compromise reached by House and Senate conferees on a meat inspection bill today. The president called the proposed legislation a strong bill, and he noted that as early as 1964, he urged an airtight meat inspection bill. Police say a 20-year-old Queens, New York youth set fire to himself in front of the U.N. building tonight. Two policemen smothered the flames with their overcoats and took him to a hospital. He's reported in critical condition. Doctors say he's not expected to live. No immediate explanation as to why he did it. An official of the Viet Cong's political arm, the Vietnamese National Liberation Front, says it will open a press office in Paris early next year. The official said the press office will have contacts with, in his word, the government and with officials which could be useful to us. Congress has given final approval to a bill to extend the life of the Civil Rights Commission. To January 31st, 1973, a voice vote in the House completed action on the measure today. It's been learned former heavyweight champ Cassius Clay expects to become a father. Linda Johnson will follow the sentimental tradition of something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue at her wedding next Saturday. Wouldn't have it any other way. Here is the weather forecast for Houston and Spring Branch Memorial. It's cloudy to partly cloudy, says the weatherman. A little warmer with a few showers through tomorrow night, turning cooler and clearing Thursday. 
Wind should be from the southeast, 8 to 18 miles an hour, and they'll be from the north on Thursday at 15 to 25 miles an hour. Early morning low, 62 degrees. Looking for an afternoon high of 72. Tomorrow night's low, 62. The chance of rain through Thursday, 20%.